Bob's house's lot has three more trees than Ed's. The two lots together have 27 trees. How many trees does each lot have? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. And then of course I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. So Bob's house is a lot. Now, if you don't know what a lot is, that's basically the property that the house sits on. So maybe here's Bob's house right there. And on his lot is a bunch of trees. Okay, so Bob's house's lot has three more trees than Ed's. The two lots together have 27 trees. How many trees does each lot have? Okay, so pretty straightforward question. So we're looking for how many trees does each lot have? So Bob, uh, Bob's lot has some trees and Ed's lot has some trees, right? So we have to look for these individual amounts. Now, how can we solve this problem? Well, uh, there are different approaches, but basically with algebra, you know, one of the easiest things that we can do is establish a variable that represents these unknown values. So maybe we'll let X equal the number of trees on Bob's lot, and maybe we'll let Y equal the number of trees on Ed's, uh, Ed's lot, right? So we have these variables. Now in algebra, uh, variables like X and Y just represent numbers. Okay, so we have at least some sort of representation of what we're looking for, okay? And the best thing to do is to uh, let your variables um, uh, basically be the unknown values, i.e. Uh, represent the thing that you're looking for to answer the question. So how many trees does each lot have? Well, if we figure out what X and Y are, we're going to solve the problem. Okay, so now that we have some variables here, and let's go ahead and uh, kind of uh, specify this more formally. So when you are doing a problem, let's suppose you are taking an algebra course or uh, you know, you're know you taking some sort of a test or exam, when you establish a variable in a, uh, a word problem, especially in algebra, you want to specify what that variable represents. So let X equal Bob's number of trees on his lot, however you want to do it, and let Y equals uh, as long as you understand what the variables uh, specifically represent. Okay, so we have these two variables. Now, what uh, should we be thinking about? Well, let me go ahead and uh, review some basic algebra concepts with you. So if you have one variable, let's just say x, okay? And if I have an equation, 2x is equal to 10, I can solve this uh, equation, okay? Because this equation is uh, only has one variable, okay? So when you're looking to solve for one variable, and uh, all you need is basically one equation. So the uh, concept that I want you to know here is that uh, the variable, the number of variables that you have uh, is equal to the number of equations you need to solve that equation. All right, so this uh, probably sounds a little bit confusing. Let me uh, kind of give you another example. So if I have x plus y is equal to 6. Matter of fact, let's just go back here real quick. 2x is equal to 10. I could solve this easily by dividing both sides of the equation by 2. So x is equal to 5. Okay, so no problem there. All right, but what about this equation right here, x plus y is equal to 6? Well, I cannot solve for x or y. I don't have enough information. So how many variables do I have? I have two. So that means that we're going to need two equations to solve for both of these variables. So maybe something like 2x minus y is equal to 10. All right, so this is a general uh, rule in algebra. Uh, the number of variables you have in an equation uh, is going to be equal to the number of equations you're going to need in order to solve for those variables. So here, this is what we call a uh, two-variable uh, linear system. Okay, now that sounds kind of fancy, but these are concepts or these are things that you study in like basic first-year algebra. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of see where I'm going here because we are looking to solve for two variables. So it's gonna make sense that we build two equations. See, we can't solve for these variables unless we actually build ourselves some equations and we can solve uh, or we can build um, equations from the rest of the information in the problem. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, you know, again, keep in mind, you might be saying, well, okay, I can at least build one equation. Well, that's not going to be enough. We're going to have to uh, build two separate equations to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so the first part, we're going to use um, this uh, part of the problem to build our first equation. So Bob's house uh, lot has three more trees than Ed's. Now, which of these is correct? Okay, so we're building equations. Remember, x is equal to the number of trees on, uh, x is equal to Bob's number of trees on his lot. Okay, so that's what x is. x is Bob's, and y is Ed's. All right, so keep that in mind. All right, so which one of these expressions represents this uh, statement right here? Okay, now one of these is right and one of these is wrong, but this is a common mistake. So let's go ahead and uh, kind of answer this. Now here, this is Bob's uh, number of trees. Okay, so is this representation uh, correct in terms of this phrase right here? So does this uh, Bob's, uh, this three, um, does 3 times E equal B? In other words, does this mean 3 more than Ed's uh, number of trees on his lot? Is that this uh, equal to Bob's uh, number of trees on his lot? Okay, in other words, is this the correct expression for this? Or is this the correct expression? Okay, so Bob's lot has 3 more trees than Ed's. Okay, so Bob's lot has 3 more trees than Ed's, or Bob's lot has three more trees than Ed's. So I'm emphasizing this because this is going to be a common source of confusion for uh, a lot of people out there that have the general idea uh, to solve this problem using a system or to build this equation, but they're going to choose the wrong equation. Okay, so now remember, we um, said that X was going to equal Bob's number of trees, so we can really build this equation, X is equal to three Y, or X is equal to three plus y. So oftentimes when you don't know what equation you kind of use these like, you know, uh, more basic representation of the problem. Okay, so I'm spending a lot of time here because this is a common source of confusion. All right, so which one is right? Well, this is correct right here. This means what? Uh, this means, this would uh, basically have to say Bob's house has three times the number of trees than Ed's, okay? That is not what this says. This, this is saying three more, okay? So whatever Ed has, three more is plus three, okay? So it's Ed's number three plus three more, okay? So again, a common uh, source of confusion. And the way you get better at this is when you study algebra in the beginning, you do a lot of work, uh, at least hopefully you've done a lot of work in the area of translating verbal phrases into algebraic or variable phrases. And if you ever were wondering, why do I have to do all that work? Well, it's because in word problems, you got to do a lot of translating. Okay, so if you thought this was right, well, at least now uh, you know, this is something that you may want to practice and do some review on. Okay, so this is one equation, x is equal to three plus y. Now we need another equation. And that's gonna be pretty easy uh, because the two lots together have 27 trees. So uh, x plus y is equal to 27, right? So this is Bob's number of trees, and this is Ed's number of trees. So two lots together have 27 total trees. Okay, so now let's put both equations together to form what we call a system, all right? And specifically, this is a two-variable linear system. And we have some options here to solve this. Okay, I'll give you some clues. And then, of course, we'll actually get into how to do this. So you want to be thinking in terms of something called the substitution method or the elimination or a linear combination method. Same method, just uh, two different names. So this is what you want to do next, right? We want to solve for X and Y. And these are the two methods that you can use. So let's go and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wouldn't stop this video and ask for your support if I didn't need your support. You see, what I'm trying to do is teach as many people as possible, and I can't do that unless I get people like yourself saying, you know what, this guy's not too bad. I'll help him out by hitting that subscribe button. But when you do that, you're not only just helping me out, you're potentially helping someone else benefit from my uh, instruction. And that's why I do these videos. I've been on YouTube for a long time. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, well, what you'll find 
is uh, well over 2,000, actually 2,500 plus math videos from basic math to advanced math and everything in between. And I am posting pretty much every day because there is a wide range of topics to cover uh, from basic math to advanced math. Now, if you're going to subscribe, hit that notification bell uh, as well so you can get my latest videos. Thank you so much. Matter of fact, this is the way I look right now. Now, let's go ahead and have finish this problem up. All right, so x is equal to uh, y plus 3 and x plus y is equal to 27. Again, we have a two-variable linear system, and uh, really, uh, we have two options here. We can use the substitution method or um, elimination or linear combination method. Now, let me just stop here. Uh, for those of you that are struggling with what I'm talking about, you're like, oh, yeah, I don't even know how to solve equations. Well, let me give you a couple um, uh, quick suggestions. Okay, so in the description of this video, you're going to find my main courses. Now, that's where my best instruction is going to be at, full comprehensive math courses, okay? So uh, you're going to want to check out pre-algebra. I teach basic concepts of systems in there. If you're more advanced, you'll find Algebra 1 or really get into, uh, obviously, uh, much more about systems in that course uh, to include what we're doing here. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, you know, if you're more advanced than that, you'll see Algebra 2, Geometry, and even Pre-Calculus, all right? So systems is, uh, is a huge topic in math. You definitely got to know how to solve them. And if you're not a math student, but you're like, eh, you know, I was doing this stuff way back in the 1970s or 1980s or 1960s, whatever the case is, and maybe you are kind of motivated to want to re uh, relearn some math, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I built that uh, course for you. Uh, we start off with basic math, then I get into a ton of algebra, geometry, even some trigonometry, and uh, even some probability and statistics. Okay, so just wanted to give you some suggestions there, just in case you don't know the next series of steps of uh, what I'm going to take. Okay, so I'm going to use the substitution method here because this right here is a perfect setup for the substitution method. So both of these methods have the same goal, and I'm talking about the substitution method and or the elimination uh, linear combination method. What we're going to try to do, or what we have to do, is get one equation with one variable. Now, we have two variables here, x and y, so I don't really care if I have a bunch of x's and then, uh, you know, one equation with just x's or one equation with just y's. It doesn't make a difference to me. I just need to get or build one equation with one of these variables. So the easiest uh, way to do this is uh, to use the substitution method because this is already set up for that. Now, I don't want to teach too much about this, make this video too long, but if you don't understand the substitution method, check out those uh, respective courses that I talked about. Okay, so the, subst uh, the substitution method is pretty straightforward. What, is, what this is saying is, is this, x is equal to y plus 3. So this thing is the same as this thing, because that's what we're saying here. One is equal to the other. So if I see an x right here, I can replace this x with this, okay, because x and y plus 3 are the same. So the way the substitution method works is that uh, in one equation, you're going to solve for one variable in one equation. Of course, we already have that, which is x is equal to y plus 3. You're going to replace that variable in the other equation with this stuff, okay? So uh, we're going to replace this x in the other equation, which, of course, is x plus y is equal to 27, with y plus 3. Now, when I do that, right, because x is equal to y plus 3, what do we have? Well, we have one equation with one variable, and that is our goal. So we have y plus 3 plus y is equal to 27. Now we could solve this simple equation. Okay, so y, uh, one y and another y is 2y plus 3 is equal to 27. So now what we're going to do is subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. That gives us 2y is equal to 24. Again, if you don't know what I'm doing here, you just need to review how to solve linear equations. Just reference those courses I talked about. So 2y is equal to 24. So to solve for y, just got to divide both sides of the equation by 2. So y is equal to 12. Okay, so uh, we have uh, y is equal to 12. What does that mean? Well, we have to go back to our setup. Remember, we had uh, let y equal uh, the number of trees on Ed's lot. So Ed has 27 trees. And we know... Uh, uh, both together they have, I'm sorry, uh, Ed's lot has 12 trees, excuse me. So we know together they have 27 trees, but even uh, so you could just refer back to um, one of the equations in the system that we built 
to uh, get Bob's number of trees. So x is equal to y plus 3. This is the perfect equation. We know that y is 12, so we just plug in uh, 12 for that, uh, for that y. So that's 12 plus 3 is, of course, 15. Okay, so a simple, you know, uh, problem. Uh, you know, the math here, uh, if this seems difficult to you, well, it very well could be difficult because maybe you haven't learned this material, right? Or maybe you haven't practiced this stuff enough. Now, to me, this is a pretty easy problem, but, you know, I've been doing this for years and years and years. It's what I do. So just because it's easy for me, it doesn't mean that it can't become easy for you, but you're going to have to put in the amount of time and effort to learn this stuff, right? You cannot, here's one of the um, thing that I think a lot of students do, or a lot of people who learn math, they oftentimes confuse uh, looking at someone solve a problem, or like a teacher, uh, they'll write out the solution, they'll say, okay, I'm watching this person do this, I understand, so therefore I can, uh, you know, I actually have this skill myself. This is uh, very much like if you want to get better in basketball, you watch, uh, you know, maybe the NBA all day. You watch TV, watch all these professional basketball players. And you're like, okay, I'm watching this, uh, so therefore I must be getting better at basketball. Well, that's not the case. That's not helping you get better. The only way you're going to get better is to practice. And how do you practice? Well, are you just going to take one shot per day? Well, okay, listen, I made the basket. I got lucky, therefore I'm great. I can make every single basket. No, you know, like basketball is a skill, okay, and math is a skill. You have to practice. You got to work hard. So you, you know, if you're discouraged, uh, you know, in terms of you know, understanding math, you can build yourself up, right? So there's definitely hope. But you got to find, you know, the right instruction and the right encouragement. And hopefully, this little, uh, this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.